dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's his dance floor and he thinks the world is all over. Nets boy here bring your latest and your Brooklyn Nets news. Okay, here it is. An always fun episode for me to do and fun episode for everyone. My Nets preseason expectations and predictions. But before I start that, I just would like everyone to know that if they have not yet seen it, to please go back and check out my last video, the, the Goodbye Brooke Lopez song. You know, I spent a lot of time on that song and on that video more than I probably should have. Um, I mean, it's it's not that great. Let's be honest. I say this every time, anytime I talk about any of my songs, I, that I am a mediocre guitar player and a terrible singer. I say it every time. So hopefully no one has seen that video with many expectations of it being that great, but it's all about fun. That's what my songs are about. They're about just having fun and, and poking fun of certain situations and just overall enjoyment. If you take the song for what it is, which is just a fun little tribute to Brooke Lopez and his career as a net, then it is it's it is what it is. If you expect it to be something like a spectacular hit single, then you're stupid, because I don't know why you would ever expect that, because, I mean, well, at least I would never expect it, so, not that I'm calling anybody stupid, but completely beside the point. Anyway, but if you haven't seen it, please go check that out. I spent a lot of time on it. Um... And I think a lot of people don't realize that's, that it's out yet because I've only gotten about like 45, 46 views. And normally, all my videos have been getting around the 200s. So I'm thinking that because it took such a long time for me to get that done, that people haven't noticed it. And um, But if you notice this one, hopefully this gets a lot of views. And then you go back and you listen to that song and you you know don't critique it too much. Because it's, I mean, it's just me singing and playing guitar mediocrely and terribly. Okay, okay, cool, okay, cool. Anyway, that aside, now let's go into this actual video, which is the Nets preseason expectations and predictions. This Nets team is going to be interesting this year. I I'm excited. The Nets went 3-1 and one in the preseason, which is fantastic. Then again, they only played the, what, the, the, the Knicks twice and the 76ers twice. And, I mean, they destroyed the Knicks. And I'm going to be honest, the Nets are definitely, I think, a better team than the Knicks this year. I think that the Knicks are good, one of the worst teams in the league this year. I mean, just look at that team. With them trading Carmelo, and and they just have really just Porzingis. I mean, they have some decent other decent players. Hernan Gomez is not terrible, and they got a few little young players that could be good. I know they brought back, um, um, what's his name? Uh, 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 great. For, forgot his name. Completely beside the point. Um, but I'm not here to talk about the Knicks, all right? I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time with the Knicks. Um, but my point is, I think the Nets are better than the Knicks. And so that's why it doesn't shock me that they beat them in both preseason games. The thing about this Nets team is that um, it's deep. They are unbelievably of a deep team. For the first time ever, there's a bunch of players on this team that you look at and you say, wow. Why is that guy in the NBA? No, there's no one on the team like that this year. And I think that that's part of the excitement of this Nets team is that there's nobody who you hate. You look at this roster from 1 through 15, and you say to yourself, they're all decent players. And that's a great problem that the Nets have. And I say it's a problem because... What is this rotation really going to be? I mean, you, we saw it kind of in that last game against the 76ers where the Nets lost. Kenny Atkins said he was going to have a regular rotation. Well, we didn't see Sean Kilpatrick. We didn't see Isaiah Whitehead. Two guys who were featured players in the rotation last last year. We didn't see Tyler Zeller, who is you know a rotational player throughout his career. So, And we barely saw Joe Harris, who was also a major player for them last year. So... What is this rotation going to be? What's the Who's going to play what position? Who's going to play what minutes? And I'm excited because that's a great problem to have. The fact that those three guys, Whitehead, Kilpatrick, and Tyler Zeller, are three guys who have not are not 
in the rotation right now makes you realize how just how deep this team actually is. Because I don't think anyone here is going to disagree that all three of those guys could easily be in the rotation. But you look at the guys who are ahead of them, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, but, you know, Sean Kilpatrick is the biggest shock. I think uh, a lot of people would not have expected him to not be in the rotation. And I don't know if he's really not in the rotation, but just basing it off of what Atkinson had said, which he said, I'm going to go with my regular rotation. And the regular rotation did not consist of Sean Kilpatrick. So, obviously, by conclusion, you have to assume he won't be in the rotation to start off the season, but anything could happen. But that's just a pretty pretty neat for the, this Nets team that they're that deep in all their positions that they can easily argue, make an co- argument for who should be in the rotation. Um, that being said, I still don't have super high expectations for this Nets team because even though they're a deep team and they have a lot of solid players, there's still no one that gets you excited on this team except for maybe D'Angelo Russell and the potential of Karis LeVert. I, I I just don't see this team being able to compete with the best teams in the league. Now, that being said, I also don't see this team being that bad. I don't think they're going to be a bottom three team in the NBA like they've been in the past. I think that they're going to be more of a middle-of-the-road team because there is no true terrible flaw with this Nets team. You know, they have an offensive punch with Russell, Lynn, and, and um, you know everyone else really the whole team is kind of offensive minded with Alan Crabb coming off the bench right now and and you know uh Rondé Hollis Jefferson has probably been the biggest surprise so far he's been very consistent offensively which I don't know if I'm, that's going to continue um but you know I think the offense is actually going to be okay and everyone's wondering how the Nets going to score without Brooke Lopez's 20 points a game that's not going to be the issue the issue is really just going to be what is the identity of this Nets team that is the biggest question I feel like we need to figure out or we need to see as fans. The identity for the last eight years has been Brooke Lopez. It's been he is the best player on the court. Figure out how to utilize him. He was the face of this team. He's not there anymore. So the true question is not how are they going to score or how are they going to. No. The true question is what are they going to look like? How is the offense going to work? Who is the face of this team? Is it Jeremy Lin or is it D'Angelo Russell? Or is it going to be somebody else who's going to come out of nowhere? What is going to be the identity of the Brooklyn Nets? And that is the question that I want to see and hopefully get answered early on. Um, I think that the success of this team is based upon really one key player, and that's D'Angelo Russell. I think if D'Angelo Russell becomes the player that we all think he can be, and is a 20 to 25 point scorer and a five to seven assist guy, which is the expectations, I think the Nets are going to be a very good team and could shock a lot of people. That being said, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't feel that's going to happen. I think Russell is going to be a good player, and I think he's going to be the lead scorer for the Nets, and him and Lynn are going to be a great one-two punch on the offensive end, and him and Lynn are going to combine for close to 40 points a game, I think. But when it's all said and done, I just don't see the same type of talent level that other teams have. But, look, I've always I've always been overly optimistic in these preseason uh, predictions, and I've always been extremely disappointed as the year's gone on. This is the first time that I'm probably the opposite. I'm probably more pessimistic about this year than I've ever been in any Brooklyn Nets season, and hopefully I'm completely wrong and they shock me because I just I just can't buy into a healthy Jeremy Lin. That's the first one. I buy into Lin, but not a healthy Jeremy Lin. I, don't, I can't buy into D'Angelo Russell really taking his game to this next level until I see it. I can't buy into Tamari Carroll having a rejuvenation season. I can't buy into Mozgov not being a waste of space. I, I can't buy into Rodney Hollis Jefferson really being an offensive threat. I can't buy into really any of these things yet until I see it. And I want to be wrong. And I hope I am wrong. But at this point, I just don't see them being a playoff team like Jeremy Lin predicts. I think they're going to be about a 28-30 to 30 win team. Which I think they'll be in the playoff hunt because the East is so weak in the bottom. You know, The East is like what? Really, the Cavs, and then the Celtics, and then what? The Raptors, and 
and then who you got. Like, like then who you got in the East after the Raptors. Think, like, those are the top three teams. And after that, it's just all a, a crapshoot. So I, they're definitely going to be a team that can be able to compete every night and probably have a couple of upsets. But I don't think they're going to have more than, than, than 35 wins max. I see them around that 28 to 32 win range, 30 wins. You know, uh, that's my prediction and of them and expectations. But, you know, anything can happen. Um, but there's there's two things that I'm going to make as a bold prediction. And neither of them I feel like are that bold. Because you know I always have to have my Nets boy bold predictions. I believe by the end of the season, two things are going to happen. And this is going to be my bold prediction because it's bold because I'm predicting two things to happen. First thing, Sean Kilpatrick will be traded. I think his time as a net has basically been done. I think he's just going to be the odd man out on this team with this very deep with guards and forwards. I think that Atkinson and the Nets want to move more towards Karis LeVert, developing him. And I just feel like Kilpatrick is the odd man out and the guy who you can probably get the most for. Like, I feel a playoff team, like a team that's trying to make the playoffs or a team that's trying to win a championship and needs a little offensive firepower, I think you could get a first-round draft pick straight up for Sean Kilpatrick. Uh, you know, obviously it would be a late first-round draft pick, but I think you could get that for him from a team that's desperate enough to make the playoffs or move deep into the playoffs. So... I, that's my first bold prediction is that Sean Kilpatrick will be traded before the uh, trade deadline because I just think he's the odd guy out. And then my second bold prediction is that before season's end, Jared Allen will be the starting center for the Brooklyn Nets. And I say that because I really like him. I love his type of game. I think he's a very, very athletic and good player. And he's showing some offensive skills. He made a three in the preseason. Hell, so did Mozgov. They both made threes in the preseason, which is like, wait, what? You know, and I think that as time goes on and Allen understands the flow of the offense and defense of an NBA game, I think it's just going to be a matter of time before you see the transition from Mozgov to him. I am not a huge Mozgov fan. I never have been. He's, to me, he's a wasted space player. There's nothing great about him at all. He's, he's a decent defender, uh, okay rebounder, a uh, mediocre offensive player. He's just a big body, and I just... I'm not a big fan. So I think that Jared Allen will become the starting center at some point before the end of the season for the Nets and that Sean Kilpatrick will be traded by the trade deadline. Those are my two bold predictions. Um, I expect the Nets to be about a 30-win team somewhere around then. I expect them to be a better team than last year, and I just expect them to, to be a deep team and a hard-fighting team. And I am excited to see development of the young players. D'Angelo Russell, Karis LeVert, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Jared Allen, Isaiah Whitehead, if he can crack the rotation. I am intrigued to see what these players will do this year. But when it's all said and done, this team is still not going to be that great. Uh, they're still not going to be anything special. They're just going to be a, a mediocre team. And uh, But who knows, maybe a mediocre team that could sneak into the playoffs because of how weak the Eastern Conference is now. So I'm not going to say that that's not a possibility, and I'm not going to say that I that would shock me. It would not shock me if the Nets played great and made the playoffs this year. I just don't have the expectations of that. For like the first time in the history of Nets, boy, I don't think the Nets have a shot at making the playoffs. But no, let me rephrase that. I just said the exact opposite. They do have a shot at making the playoffs. I just don't have the expectations of them to making the playoffs. I feel like I might have contradicted myself slightly with that statement. But beside the point, when it's all said and done, I think the Nets are going to be a very good team or a solid team, uh, an average team, a uh, mediocre team, more contradiction because I just said the exact opposite. But either way, <laughs> I feel like they're going to be a fun team to watch and it's going to be a good year for them uh, in retrospect to the past few seasons. Uh, so let's just quickly go and look and see the schedule for the Brooklyn Nets. How does it start for the Nets? So they start off with their first game Wednesday against the Pacers. Pacers are a team in all sorts of flux. I know that the Pacers believe that they can... Um, oh, the, oh, the other preseason game was the Heat. That was the other preseason game. Okay, so they won two games against the, the Knicks and then one game against the Heat and then they lost to the 76ers. What, whatever, that's, that's, that's irrelevant. Um, they play the Pacers... 
That's going to be an interesting game. Then they play the Magic. Then they play the Hawks. And then the Magic again. Look, Magic are a beatable team. Pacers are a beatable team. Hawks are one of the worst teams in the league now. They could go 4-0. They won't. I think anything that's 2-2 two or two or better is a great start to the season for the Nets. But, you know, they could be a very good team. If compared to other teams, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty. That's all I'll say. There's a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty. Who knows what's going to happen? I sure as hell don't. But I am excited because with so many question marks, it brings interest and intrigue. So let's go. Let's see what happens. Um, so that being said, keep your eyes open for the next Nets Boy episode. Um, we're going to start these regular, like, every week or two weeks now where I post an episode about the last week or two of the uh, season. So... NBA season, let's, let's start, and until then, this is Nets Boy, excited for the season, and signing off.